Welcome to the Solemn Vanguard channel. Today we are going over my Overdress Gravidia deck for the set 7 format. Shout out to 50cards.shop for all of the beautiful SPs you see in this deck. So if you need any cards, use the code SOLEM at the link in the description. Also, we have a beautiful new playmat on zerodamagegaming.com for all of you Gravidia fans out there. Be sure to use the code SOLEM for that as well. And of course, if you want to up your Vanguard skills, there's also the Vanguard Mastery course on zerodamagegaming.com. It's always the code SOLEM. So getting into the deck, Gravidia is straight up my favorite deck in Overdress. It's so cool. It's so beautiful. It has such a big hand, which is like the biggest thing for me because I always feel in Overdress like my hand is so small. My opponent could hit one extra trigger and it would randomly decide the game even if I was playing optimally purely because my hand is so small and my shield is so small as well. So Gravidia is one of the few decks that really builds a hand that can kind of sustain through that and that's why it's, it's straight up one of my favorites. Also, most of my Overdress tops have been with Gravidia because ah, she's my girl. So let's start off with the ride line. We have our Gravidia. We have our grade one, which is still the world. I still like the Orphist ride line a lot. The world really adds an extra dimension to the deck, really adds a little bit more early push that this deck really likes because if your opponent is at higher damage, the random crit doubling will straight up kill people instantly. And of course we have whichever starter you prefer. I like this one because Gravidia, of course, my girl. But then finally, we have changed one thing. You will notice this deck hasn't changed all that much in my opinion but there is one crucial new difference and that is combine rusher this is a new card from set six so not that new but you know relatively new and what it will essentially do is whenever you activate an order from your hand it will then come back to play this is really good because it fixes one of the issues gravidia has which is front row attackers especially in this format i feel like there's quite a bit of removal more so than back in the day and so now basically being able to get something back just every single time it's kind of like our own maple is really really nice also if you have enough set orders out it he will also get nice and big so overall really solid we do lose that 5k from the other ride line that we had back in the day but that's totally worth it in my opinion next we have triple gravidia of course persona riding is broken so why wouldn't you have the maximum amount of persona ride we have four baku borito the best card ever this gets you your meteors back this gets crits this gets power this is probably like the 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 best rear guard we can ask for. I will sometimes, if I have my persona right, also keep this in my opening hand, you know. I will mull for this, you know. If you're thinking, okay, I'm mulligan, what are the things I'm really looking for? It's persona ride and then this thing. This will also allow you to ditch your meteors for riding up because you'll be getting them back anyway. Next, we have a one of these, the little moony boy for um, the shadow army token. Let me grab that shadow army token. So yeah, you need to be, you need to be running this in my opinion, Gravidia still. I know a lot of people in set four and and afterwards we're like oh but i like pure i like pure i don't like pure i really like it with the shadow army token that extra little push can really matter and also if your opponent can't remove it now your burrito column gets way harder to guard as well later on next i'll play triple stanner i know not everyone runs this card anymore because it is only a big attacker and a big shield but i'm personally still a fan of just having better shield because the meteors really make it so we don't have that much shield in the deck and also because because there's quite a bit of removal, you know, think back to Youthberg right now, they will often snipe our burritos. If you think about Youthberg Tempest, which is now coming out in set 7, their checks will often have a grade 3 because they run a bunch of grade 3s, you know, they run like 10 or something. So they will very often be able to put away our burritos and now you don't have rear guards. So we really, really want to run a couple rear guards that are, you know, just able to be called, able to replace the burritos constantly. And Stanner is a really solid one for that. Now there's people who are also fans of the on hit and i personally like the on hit i have played with it a little bit as well it is possible that that's like slightly better but it's also possible it's slightly worse i'm not really entirely convinced so for now i'm just playing with my beautiful sps <laughs> but it's solid it's definitely solid the most important thing is that you just do still have attackers in order to play around the fact that youth burke is going to blow up your field speaking of blowing up your field i'm also playing double barringer this card is absolutely incredible just the fact that you get to dig more for persona ride which which this deck is extremely reliant on. Like, this deck is very Persona Ride reliant. And of course, it draws a lot, so it does tend to, you know, draw it pretty often. Still, I want to have the highest possible odds, and this card helps with that. We can't run too many of this because the soul cost is huge. Like, realistically, you can only activate a Barringer once per game. But it's also really good because it can get our Combine Rusher out of soul. So if the only cards you have to get your Combine out are the Burritos, I don't feel that safe. So this is basically like my fifth and sixth copy to get Combine Rusher into rotation. Because 
because again, they're gonna be able to wipe us, and when they wipe us, we want to have new rear guards. That is absolutely crucial. Next, we'll have four of the fancy meteor. I don't assume I need to explain that. You know, this just uh, is needed to do the five meteor trick with Gravidia. And then we also have some number of meteors. I actually forget how many there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of the other meteors. So all these meteors together are our meteor annihilate our opponent's board package. I'm a big fan of them. It's always hard to know exactly how many you want to play. I think in the pure Gravidia version, you play more of these because you're really reliant on the grade one to hit a bunch of them. But then if you're playing, you know, something like this with the Shadow Army token, I think this is a fine number. Uh, some people might want to play eight. Some people want to play six of the of the orange one. Personally, I like this number. I've also topped with this number. So I just feel very, very safe with it. Speaking of feeling safe, here's our perfect guards. Of course, we have uh, the order one. The order one is absolutely broken. And then we have the normal ones. The order one, you know, I mean, you got it. You got it. Cool. <laughs> it's a free PG. I don't know. I don't see why you would ever want to not have a free PG. It's not always free, but you know what I mean. Before we go any further, though, do you have this beautiful playmat yet? No? What, what are you waiting for? You know, click it open. Just zerodamagegaming.com. Use the code SOLEMN. What are you doing? There's also a bunch of other playmats if you're interested in that. So now we got two Bobal Mine. This card is crucial to me. And I know so many people have been cutting it, but I just don't agree. <laughs> when you play with the Shadow Army token, if anyone is smart enough to just swing at it, and now you don't have CB for your Gravidia turn, that's a yikes. So having access to the Bobal Mine at least ensures that either your opponent is too scared to attack the Shadow Army token to, to try and, you know, damage deny you because it might not work. And secondly, if you draw it, you know, okay, I can go balls to the walls because I'm going to have my CB anyway. So to me, Bobal Mine is an absolutely crucial card. It has been in my deck since Gravidia came out and it has never left. Then for triggers, we have our criticals. Um, as always, I am still playing my little weirdo splits. As I've explained before, I will sometimes straight up when I go first, call a critical behind my Vanguard and just bash my opponent's skull with it. This deck needs to get my opponent at high damage, you know, and especially now that our grade two no longer gets the 5k because we have replaced it with Combine Rusher. Now it's even better to do that. With that being said, I still like these as well because against Prison, you know, you just have like this endless anti-Prison engine with them. But I don't think Prison is played that much anymore either. So it might actually be wise to just play more of this. So it kind of depends on your meta, I guess. If your Locals has a bunch of Prison or you go to an event where you think you'll see a bunch of Prison, you can play more of this. But if you don't think so, then I think you play more of this. It also helps that Gravidia's magic numbers always line up with the plus 5k. Like she'll be 13, then she'll go to 28 and she'll go to 38 and now you add the 5 that's 43 so you're making it like really awkward to guard by adding that 5k so you know if you can put it on in the back row from turn one you'll you'll feel that continuous value next i am playing three fronts i know this is like a little bit discussed some people play the draws other people play the fronts i am still not convinced what's actually better in this deck it's wild like usually i have like really good ideas on theory i will think like oh this is clearly better or this is clearly better after a bunch of test games but here here it's like, no, you know, Gravidia kind of has a deck out issue in the sense that, you know, against a very slow deck, you can go to deck out. And then it also has a tiny shield issue and you also draw a lot of cards. So you would think, wow, that makes draws really bad. But when you double triggers, draws become insanely good. On the other hand, fronts are also really good when doubled. And then it's also 20k shield. So it's fixing the shield issue and it doesn't get you closer to deck out. So both of them are really solid. I still don't know what's really best. I'm sticking to fronts right now. That makes me feel a bit safer, but you know, up to you. As you know, when it comes to card choices, I don't often say up to you. <laughs> like, lots of things are not up to you in my opinion, but here, I just don't know. Then we have the skill trigger. This thing is so broken in this deck. Sometimes I think I'm only playing Gravidia because this trigger is in the deck. You might think, oh, it's only one in 50. Like, no. This deck will so consistently hit it. It's absolutely insane. Again, this deck has a deck out issue, meaning it will go through the whole deck consistently, meaning it will see this card consistently. You're either going to draw it or you're going to check it. And when you check it offensively, usually you auto win. If you have double your triggers, you straight up auto win. There are so few situations in decks that don't just 
just get blown up the second this is checked. It's absolutely insane. In this deck in particular, the over trigger is probably like the most broken thing imaginable. And then we have, of course, our four heals. Why wouldn't you play heals? So this is my current Gravidia deck. As you saw, not that many changes, but the big one really is the Combine Rusher. It does add another dimension to the deck. Again, shout out to 50 cards shop for the SPs. Shout out to ZeroDamageGaming.com for this beautiful new playmat. Use the code Solemn. And if you want to up your Vanguard skills, Vanguard Mastery, also ZeroDamageGaming.com. Use the code Solemn. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you soon. Ciao.